Now, if you live anything like how I live, at some point you looked at your cable television bill and said, this cable TV has got to go. And you decided to join the ranks of the cord cutters. Those people who decided to go without cable television service. Back in the day, having no cable television would have just meant going without, which meant you didn't see the TV shows. Either that, or you were trying to fiddle with some rabbit ears, or you were trying to bum VCR tapes off your friends and coworkers. Thankfully, the situation's a little bit better today. Most of us have some experience with streaming video from services like Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime Video. And those services are fantastic when it comes to watching on-demand content. If you can tolerate watching your shows after they're broadcast, they work great. Sometimes you have to wait a day. Sometimes you have to wait a few months. Sometimes you even have to wait a season or two. But the point is, you can't watch TV when it airs. Being able to watch TV when it's broadcast is hugely important if you're watching live events like sports or shows that might be spoiled like the finale of American Idol or The Voice or the myriad number of shows that just never show up on Hulu or Netflix. So what are you supposed to do? Thankfully, there are a number of streaming services now that emulate cable TV and allow you to watch television as it is broadcast. That is when it airs. And I'm gonna to talk today about three of them. DirecTV Now, Hulu with Live TV, and YouTube TV. Again, there are other services, but I don't have experience with them, so I can't tell you about them. Now, all three of these services have apps that allow you to watch them on an iOS or Android tablet or phone, and that's great. It means you can take your video with you, you can watch it while you're mobile, while you're commuting, while you're waiting in line, uh, doing a number of things. But most of us prefer to watch our TV on the TV. We didn't go out and buy 55, 60 inch televisions so that we could watch television on the iPad. No, 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 no. And so the challenge is getting the television from the internet to that comfortable spot in your house, your sofa, your den, your family room, living room, bedroom, whatever, to that big screen TV. Back when you had cable television, your cable company gladly rented you a set-top box for about $10 a month that converted your cable signal to something that your TV could broadcast. How are you gonna get your TV from the internet to the television? Well, the way you do that is with a streaming box and some of the best are the Roku and Apple TV. Other people have had great success with Amazon Fire TV or the Nvidia Shield, which might be the most technically advanced streaming box ever made. But I don't have experience with those last two, so I'm gonna keep it to the Roku and the Apple TV. Before we look at any individual service, let's talk about a few of the challenges you'll have coming from cable TV. The first thing you'll notice is that there are no channel numbers. That's not really a big deal, but most TV listings are based on the idea of channel numbers. And so you'll find listings that have one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 to channel, you know, 800, 900. And you won't have an easy way to correlate that between those numeric listings and the sort of alphabetical listing that you get through most of these set-top streaming services. One of the other things you'll notice is that changing channels happens very slowly. Uh, selecting a channel launches it, but it may take anywhere from three or four seconds to as many as 10, 12, 15 seconds before you're actually watching video. This means that if you're somebody who likes to sit with the remote and click from channel to channel, uh, you're going to want to give that behavior up because uh, you're going to be clicking and waiting, waiting, waiting. And once you get to something, you're going to click and wait, wait, wait. So for those of you who like to channel surf, this is not the system for you. You're going to have to give that habit up. Finally, one of the challenges you'll face when you deal with these services versus cable television comes to navigation. A typical cable television remote or a remote like this TiVo remote has lots of buttons and in particular it's got these number buttons down here at the bottom and remember those channel numbers we talked about before well you don't have them anymore and on these simplistic remotes that you have uh, this is the remote for the Roku box uh, this is the remote for the Apple TV 
not a lot of buttons and in particular all you have is navigation up down left right and then you can select OK for better and for worse these on-screen apps look just like their mobile counterparts that's better because it means that once you learn how to use the mobile app you'll know exactly how to use the on TV app for worse because you don't have a touch screen on the television whereas on the touch screen you can skip around and touch any element at any particular time you can swipe quickly and scroll through on the television side you'll have to go through each element one at a time tap 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 click 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 to get to what you want if you've ever used an on-screen keyboard you'll know exactly what I'm talking about alright so let's start by looking at direct TV now direct TV now's claim to fame is that it gives you more channels per buck than perhaps any of the other services and the lowest tier starts at $35 a month um, you can get these channels you see that there are additional tiers here at $50 $60 $70 one of the things that's kind of cool is that if you use another AT&T service notably if you have unlimited cell phone service with AT&T you can get a $25 per month discount on your bill which means that the entry level service goes down to $10 uh, this one goes to 25 this goes to 35 and you can see the additional channels you get as you select each tier you figure out which channels are important to you and which tier is required to get them here's another thing that's kind of cool about direct tv now they have some of the cheapest premium channels i've seen anywhere hbo for five bucks a month that's pretty incredible direct tv now works in a browser it works on mobile and it works on the roku but the uh and apple tv okay so let's start the direct tv now app and see what's going on here takes a few seconds for the app to start waiting 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 and it comes up on the last station that we were watching which happens to be showing a college football game now if i click left or right on the roku box i can go from channel to channel it just goes in alphabetical order you see it takes a few seconds for each channel to start and that's why i said channel surfing probably not the greatest experience here and you see about a five or six second delay before it actually starts the next program makes surfing through channels a very slow process now if we bring up the guide we can go in here and see the channel that we're on and suppose we're here on FS1 and we want to go to TBS well we've got a long way to go to tap through all of these shows and all of these stations in alphabetical order to get to the one that we want it takes a long time now you can assign certain channels as favorites and if you go to your favorites channel you've got a much smaller grouping to scroll through and it makes it a bit faster but if you want to go to one of the channels that is not your favorite you've just got a lot of tapping to do on a mobile device this can be done by swiping and scrolling it's a much faster process but here with the simplified roku remote it takes a while click 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 you get the point if i'm watching a program and i tap up or down i can bring up one or two menus uh, this one at the top allows you to search get to the guide your watch list which is shows that you can set or your settings uh, tapping down brings up a larger menu that has some of the same elements in particular what you got here is an on-demand section so you got shows uh, that are in your on-demand viewing library much like a cable television service so you're not really missing anything there you've also got a selection of movies that you can watch at no cost you see there's a variety of genres a little something for everybody in the family and you can pick any of these and just start watching them so what are the downsides of direct tv now well first and foremost there's no dvr functionality which means you can't record the shows that are broadcast over the air now to be fair they do have some limited pause rewind replay functionality but there's no true dvr Allegedly, they're working on a DVR which is supposed to be ready before the end of 2017. If rumors are correct, it'll offer 100 hours of record time. I can say categorically that's not enough for a family 
especially if there's a digital pack rat like me in the clan, somebody who likes to record a bunch of shows up front and figure out what they want to watch later. Um, also, sometimes the streaming buffers. Now, some people have complained that it buffers to the extent that their shows are unwatchable. I haven't had quite that level of problem, uh, except maybe in one circumstance. But sometimes the buffering does happen. It can interrupt your viewing and take you out of the moment. Oddly enough, the on-demand content, sometimes in the watch list or what have you, buffers more than the live television, which I find odd. But I don't know that those sources are coming straight from DirecTV. They may be getting redirected straight from the networks or some sort of complicated thing. And that's a nuisance, but really the biggest downside is no DVR. DirecTV really needs a DVR to be competitive at this point in the game. All right, next up, let's take a look at Hulu with live TV. Now, this is really a tale of two services. At the core, you've got the Hulu that you've known and loved. And Hulu is perhaps the best way to watch current season television shows of any service that I know of. And that's still the case. The Hulu that you knew and loved is still there. But to that, they've added this live TV option, which you don't have to get. But if you choose to get live TV, you have to scroll down on the website and find this link down here at the bottom for live TV. Now, I was all set to complain about how hard it is from the Hulu homepage to find the live TV service. And literally, as I was recording this video, they went and updated the web page. And now that link is right here at the top. Um, so I can click it. It's now easy to find, at least for the moment. Once you click it, it takes you to the live TV option and you can see everything that gets you. Now, Hulu with live TV comes with only one channel tier. And once you subscribe, you get all the channels. There are no additional service levels. Everything is right there. What they do is sell you add-ons, which is to say that if you want, for example, um, more DVR space, that's going to cost you extra. If you want to watch on unlimited screens, that's going to cost you. Um, obviously, these premium channels will cost you. That's why they're premium. Uh, if you want no commercials, that also costs you, which I find a little odd. I would think at $40 per month, they could go ahead and get rid of the commercials. But everything in the on-demand package is there, plus you get the live TV channels with the recording ability. Now, if we fire up the Hulu app, it takes a moment to come up, but what you'll find is that it is a very good looking app. And now it supports profiles very much like Netflix does. That's something DirecTV now does not have. It's great to keep people from stepping on each other's programs. But you'll find that this app looks very much like what you'll see if you start it up on a mobile device. If you fire up the Hulu app on your phone, it looks very much like this. Unfortunately, again, you can scroll through very quickly on a mobile device, not so much here. You'll see that there are large graphic placards that make it just look really nice no matter what show is, is uh, presenting to you. But you'll also notice that the menus are very much straight lines as opposed to grids, for example. And that means to get to things, there's a lot of scrolling. This is especially bad if we go into, for example, the uh, my shows area where you get personalized coverage of your shows and if we go to the DVR you get a reverse chronological list of the shows that you've recorded that is the DVR functionality that you've used unfortunately there's no grouping of shows there's no way to resort these shows alphabetically or in chronological order it's just from most recent to least recent, and that's it. Which means if you're looking for the earliest episode of a show you haven't watched, you pretty much have to scroll all the way to the bottom and then start moving back up to find the uh, first show in the sequence. And you see, this clicking takes a long time. 
and it only gets longer as you get more shows. So let's say I'm in the DVR menu and I decide I want to delete a show. So I'm going to delete this episode of the Rachel Maddow show from Friday. I delete it, asks me, yes, I want to delete it. And then it takes me back to the top of the DVR menu. Imagine if I wanted to delete a few shows from the bottom of this menu that I would have to scroll to the bottom, delete and scroll to the bottom again. Not very efficient, not very fun. Previously, I said that this was like two services grafted into one. On the one hand, you've got the legacy Hulu, which has on-demand content and it works fantastically. 9.5 out of 10. Easy to understand, easy to access. On the other hand, you've got the with live TV component, which is not necessarily easy to find, much less easy to use. As you can see, I'm given programs. I don't have necessarily a list of channels or networks that's easy to find. Um, it's easy enough to search for shows and record them directly, and that works well, except sometimes the recordings end up with skips in them. And when it plays back and skips, you may think it's a problem with your network, but if you rewind and replay, you get the skips in the same spot, which indicates that no, the problem is indeed with the service. Once you do find your way to the network or the live television you want to watch, it works most of the time, though I have had some instances where the buffering was too much to make the service usable. But otherwise, it works as you would think. However, they do advertise this service as being in beta and to a large extent, it does still feel like it. It has some kinks to work out. And you can see there's the buffering that I mentioned. And this show is unwatchable right now. So keep in mind, it is a beta service. And even though the initial price is cheap, by the time you add on all the options, it may be as expensive as some cable services. Finally, we've got YouTube TV. Now, if there's one thing YouTube knows how to do, it is how to store and deliver video almost flawlessly. And that shows in the service. In fact, looking here at the web page, you can see it's almost like they're showing off by delivering to you multiple live thumbnail previews at the same time. There are no buffering issues and no streaming headaches. The recordings don't skip. It's flawless. The downside, there aren't as many channels as with competing services. While it does come in at one tier, low flat rate of $35, it doesn't have some of the big channels like TBS, uh, some of uh, TBS's sister stations like TNT and so forth. Those may be coming as YouTube works out the licensing arrangements, but we'll have to see. On the upside, this service is great for pack rats because it allows you to store an unlimited amount of recordings for up to nine months. After nine months, it will begin to delete things, but up until that point, you can select every program in the book if you want to, and then decide what you want to watch later. It works great in that regard. Um, one of the other big downsides is that there are no apps for streaming devices. That is to say there are no native apps for Roku or Apple TV that allow you to watch YouTube TV. In lieu of not having any native apps for Roku or Apple TV or any other devices, you can play the video on your mobile device and cast it to the TV. It does result in a little bit of softening of the video, but it does work. Watching shows on YouTube is easy breezy. Um, you've got a library where you can see the shows that you have recorded or that you've requested up to this point. You've got the home screen that sort of shows you what's going on right now. And you've got live TV where you can essentially go through and see all the available networks and what is playing and what's coming up soon. It's a very simple, easy to use interface. I do have a few nits to pick with it. Uh, one is that when you're playing a show, as you can see this show plays, normally plays pretty well. You'll see in the controls there's no way to actually stop the show. All you can do is pause it. And unfortunately what that means is that if the website refreshes for any reason, 
and it does seem to automatically refresh from time to time, your show will resume and you may not be around when that happens. I've had that happen to me on more than one occasion if you pause shows for a long time. The only way to get out of this view is to scroll down, but that show is still in a paused mode up there. And there's really no way to get rid of it until you refresh the page. Additionally, because there's an unlimited amount of space for recordings, there's no way to delete recordings. Now that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if I go in, for example, to NBC Nightly News and I want to watch today's episode, well, guess what? I've got to scroll through all the episodes in the month of October to get down to the one for today on the 21st, as opposed to being able to delete all of these that occurred before so that they don't show up in the listing. That's another nit to pick. But otherwise, the video streaming experience itself is pretty flawless. The price is pretty low. They have a number of local affiliates in most of the areas they serve, but some of the big name channels are not there. Also, I neglected to mention that with all three of these services, DirecTV Now, Hulu with Live TV, and YouTube TV, you can authenticate for channel-specific apps just as you can with a cable service. So for example, if you download the Disney television app or the Disney XD app on your tablet so that your kid can watch shows while you're out, you can use your subscription to any of these three services to log in and demonstrate that you are a licensed Disney or Disney XD television holder and you can use those apps. So, which of these three services is the best? Well, with DirecTV Now, you get a lot of channels and if you're already an AT&T cell phone user, you get that discount. Uh, unfortunately, there's no DVR with this service. Uh, Hulu with live TV, you get a good number of channels. Uh, it's based on the excellent Hulu on-demand service, but the live TV streaming and the DVR still need some work, and it only comes with 200 hours of recording time, which may not be enough for a family. YouTube TV, you get an outstanding streaming service. You get unlimited storage for your recordings uh, up to nine months old, but there aren't as many channels as there are with other services and there are no apps yet for your streaming boxes. You've got to figure out what's important to you. Is it the channel selection? Is it the amount of recording space? Is it the app availability? Whatever it is you need and choose your service based on your requirements. What works well for you may not be what works for everybody else. So good luck to you in cutting the cord and entering the world of streaming. If you like this video, hit that like button or go ahead and subscribe. And if you don't like this video, you can go straight to hell.